Later on in the program, we'll be looking at the progress of curiosity on Mars. But first, we look through the prism for a slice of green cheese. There was some debate whether Lunokhod 2, a Soviet-era lunar rover, held the record for longest man-made trek across the moon. Now NASA has provided the evidence that might just settle the matter. John Logston, founder of the Elliott School Space Policy Institute at George Washington University and author of John F. Kennedy and the Race to the Moon, joins us with some answers. Welcome back, Dr. Logston. Good afternoon. So it turns out that not only did this Soviet-era rover go further than any other rover, but it went further by about three miles. Is that right? Yes. That, it's now been uh, measured first by uh, Russian scientists and then confirmed by people in the United States that uh, instead of going in a straight line, it did some loops and backing up. And so rather than a total 23 miles of roving, it's close to a marathon, 26 miles. So we're not talking about linear miles, but we're talking about overall distance. Exactly. It's, it's not a straight line from where it started to where it ended up. It took some excursions along the way and say, did circled so it could take some pictures and, and backed up you know, to particularly interesting places. So the, the total was 26. Now, is this rock-solid evidence, given the environment of the moon, you wouldn't expect greater stability, geologically speaking, but over 40 years, couldn't erosion or other forces impact the trail? Uh, the, the surface of the moon is pristine. The, the astronaut steps are still there, and the tracks of Lunacod are still there. It's a a U.S. satellite called Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, that is observing from lunar orbit uh, these details. And it it can see things as small as uh, 1.6 feet. So a a 23-mile track, it can easily see. And how important were the forebears of Curiosity? What lessons did we learn from them? Well, we learned that, that a robotic spacecraft can move across the uh, surface of another celestial body and do some interesting science, but not as interesting as, as uh, human explorers, but, but a lot cheaper. It's a trade-off between humans exploring, doing in, in-person field geology, and sending our machines to do it. But the success of vehicles like Lunacod did pave the way for vehicles like Curiosity later? Well, in the sense that they were rovers that operated on one on the Earth's moon and the other on Mars, yes. Uh, but, uh, gee, we're several orders of magnitude more sophisticated in our instruments in 2013 than we were in uh, 40 years ago in 1973 when Lunacod was on the moon. Did Lunacod have any other serious challengers? Yes, Opportunity, which has been on the surface of Mars nine years, has gone 23 miles. So when we thought Lunacod had gone 23, there was some possibility that Opportunity would break that record. Now, with uh, Lunacod confirmed as having gone 26 miles, it's going to take uh, some time, and uh, that Opportunity will last long enough to go those extra three miles. So how long does it take to travel these 23 or 26 miles on the moon? Obviously, this isn't as fast as our cars on Earth. Well, hardly, no. Uh, It's, it's, you know, feet per minute sort of thing. Uh, Lunacod did its 26 miles in five months. Opportunity has done its 23 miles in nine years. So uh, that's not a very speedy rate. No, but I have been at that rate of speed several times on the Beltway here in Washington, D.C. This is true. We all experience that. Looking at a marathon journey across the moon, I'm Andrew Hiller for The Prism, and we've been joined again by John Logston. He's the founder of the Elliott School Space Policy Institute at George Washington University and the author of John F. Kennedy and the Race to the Moon. Thank you, John. You're welcome.